Welcome back to Worlds. Ah, feels good to say that. Our next game pits the LPL's EDG versus the LMS's second seed in Mad Team, who are new to the world stage. So I'm gonna hand over Spawn to help us break them down. Yeah, we've seen a little bit of EDG, so I thought I would hit on Mad, you know, second seed coming out of the LMS. And they're a lineup that plays heavily around Kongyu, who was our player to watch, but also their bottom lane, because as a lineup, you do need to be able to have a pressure point of the map, you know? They're the former AHQ fighters, they're AHQ's challenger squad that now coming into this year have taken the second place seed in both the regular seasons coming into this. So, you know, they're a team that has been consistent throughout the LMS, and I just want to hit on something that they might do in this game to give their bottom lane advantage, because they know that uh, iBoy as well as Mako will probably go towards a Kaiser lane. It's big in the LPL, it's something that we've seen a lot around the world and in Worlds playing so far, and they do have an Ez answer for it. It is Ezreal, 16 games for Ezreal on Breeze. He does go the blue Ezreal build, and he's willing to pick that up into the Kaiser matchup. And the way it kind of works is that Kaiser has one of the most expensive builds in the game. Quintus Rageblade or Storm Razor, plus Zerka's Grease, you know, you go into the other side of it. Blue Ezreal, on the other hand, just given his item builds, does have a re relatively cheap item spike. And if you get towards this point of the game, this is where Ezreal can really start. Right, so by the time Ezreal's reached this, if yep. gold is even, this is all Kaisa has in her pocket. So the power spike here for Ezreal, just a little bit greater at that point. Yeah, absolutely. And I think the big thing is, not only is it a DPS, you know, kind of neutrality, this just gives you a lot more control. Ezreal is a champion does push in the wave because he always gets first access due to Mystic Shot. And if you are able to get towards a 1-3-1 and park this guy in a Tom Kench in the mid lane wave, they are very safe and it allows Kongyu to get to positions on the map very quickly and kind of be that first jungler there. So I think that this is something that they will look to force. They also can do it against Varus. It is a little bit more risky, but okay. they're kind of the tendencies of Edward Gaming, and I think that Mad can look to maybe try and win a portion of them. Well, Ezreal was the most played bot laner in the world this year, so it's very likely that we see that pick coming out today. Would love to see the matchup against the Kai'Sa. With that, time for us to toss it out to the casters as we're getting into game two. Thank you very much. We're about to jump into EDG taking on Mad Team in Picks and Bands. And I really like the theory behind the Ezreal versus Kai'Sa. And, and I look at it and I, I read it on paper and I go, that's great. <laughs> but then I see it's iBoy's Kai'Sa. It's his most played champion by far. 21 games in summer, 14 wins. Yeah. Does the theory hold up against iBoy? 20 21 games and his next most plays was eight games yeah. uh, on Illusion. And I personally will take the Kai'Sa every time in the current meta just because, yes, you know, there is this spike for Ezreal, and he's right. When you have your two-item power spike, you're feeling great. You know, Kai'Sa isn't multi-items compounding yeah. on each other uh, and allowing to de her to destroy multiple people on your team at the same time. But then there's also a long stretch of the game where Kai'Sa takes over uh, and will dominate the team fights. Plus, there are a lot of interesting things with Kai'Sa where, uh, you know, you can pick people off and join hard CC champions that you have on your team uh, in trying to get to the back line and... Uh, iBoy has been one of the players that we've seen on the international stage and already in play-ins uh, dominate very much with that champion. Same thing said for Breeze, though, and his preference yeah. for the Ezreal, so I like what Spawn is bringing up. Well, I mean, iBoy was just on the camera a moment ago. I don't think that young boy feels feelings. He's just a machine <laughs> all the time. Uh, let's turn our attention to Mad Team, of course, the second seed coming out of the LMS. This is the team that mm -hmm. placed uh, fourth in spring, second in summer. Um, they were the former AHQ challenger team. And one of the things that I really like when I look at this team is watching new blood rising the ranks in LMS to challenge, replace AHQ. And AHQ have been relegated. They're not here. So there's a lot of expectation on uh, the teams that come out of LMS because oftentimes they have that Korean killer history, but they haven't necessarily lived up to the hype since season two. Yeah, it was kind of... A sad thing for me, I took the other look at it as HQ was sort slowly falling and, you know, getting old and unable to qualify now. Yes, we have the new blood here yes. and the new team is going to come in. But as you said, they're unproven here. Yes. Mad Team doesn't have a lot of, uh, you know, credibility to go for on the international stage. You can be super hyped for uh, their jungler, though. Kong Yu, he won all pro jungler in the LMS, um, even over anyone. Uh, you know, on Flash Wolves who have dominated it. And he has been an exciting guy to watch wow. because he is an offensive, kill-oriented jungler who plays to the bottom side. We're about to meet both EDG and Mad Team. As I believe Costa Jun will be taking us through the proceedings in just a moment. 
There we go. Cast the June in the background. Just introducing all the players on EDG to the local fans in Busan. And EDG, it's been, it's been an up and down year again for them. You know, when you look at the players, when you look at the team, I believe this is the fifth consecutive world for EDG. They were the most dominant team coming out of play ins, and we'll get to them in a moment. We are in fact introducing Mad Team first. And Kobe, on the side of Man Team, you've already touched on Kong Yu. But what about some of the solo lanes? What about Liang and, and Uniboy? How are they going to match up against the likes of Ray and Scar? Well, as we're introducing them, I hate to break it to you, quick shot, but Uniboy does not have very good stats. Uh, struggled uh, a decent amount in the LMS season. Uh, he was around 10th in four percentage. Uh, that's playing past the halfway point in your lane, as well as CSD at 15, while also having one of the highest jungle proximity differences, which means that his all-pro jungler spent a disproportional amount of time in the mid lane trying to help him and get wow. kills for him. Uh, but still wasn't able to, you know, get those CS leads and uh, work on that. So him going up against Scout is going to be one of the matches, one of the lanes that we'll probably focus on here uh, because a lot of people are kind of worried for him going up against Scout, who's been known to, you know, get solo kills and already showed a few this world. And that problem is going to be especially exacerbated when you consider EDG are starting Haro in the jungle. Uh, his early game is phenomenal. He's one of the most effective early game junglers. So, you know, that could be a way in for EDG if they're looking to pick up their first win in group stage here. Yeah, Haro, uh, you know, he has number one first place kills plus assists at 15. He goes for a lot of action. He creates a lot of action uh, in the LPL. And him and Clearlove ha have traded some time. Uh, him, though, putting him in and him starting in group stages, to me, after they've, they've gone through plans, makes me think that they want to play to an early aggressive style and not let Mad Team take over any sort of control on the bottom side because that has been the way that they win. You know, if you gank down there uh, and get the AD carry rolling for themselves, uh, it looks like they want to put a stop to that very early on. Well, I want to keep my eyes on the jungle picks and bans, see if there's any pressure in that pool, whether or not we can get our hands on a Lee Sin again. That'll be quite exciting. It's phase one here, Aatrox, Irelia, Akali, Kai'Sa. This just feels like patch 8.19 OP picks. Uh, Tom Kench is banned out there, targeted towards what are we K. What are we missing? There he is. <laughs> so pretty much all of the top tier picks are out the, the, you know, taken off the table. So what rises in value now? So my personal opinion, my eyes always gravitate towards the supports right now because there are some hard engaged supports up. Uh, the Rakan is available. The Alistar is available. Uh, and between those two, I always prefer the Alistar because with the ultimate, you can survive a bit better. The Rakan does offer quicker, uh, lightning quick, you know, initiations and a little bit longer distance, but uh, those are available. And with again, Zaya being first picked, uh, it offers the trade here. Are you going to pick up the Rakan here in order to split up the Lovers duo from Mad Team, or do you not want to sacrifice one of your first round picks in order to get that? They've gone with the Gragas, so they have the possibility of those Body Slam Flash plays uh, and the big ultimates coming through, uh, and they are going to double it up and split the Zaya Rakan once again. Yeah, well, K is... Uh pretty comfortable on this Rakan. Eight games played, six of them wins. But when I look at the Gragas, uh, there's not a lot of games played on the side of Mad Team. Kong Yu's only got himself two under his belt and there's actually none for leading in the top lane. So they're definitely adapting. And with gaming, they're gonna lock in the Leona once again. And I think that, is, that was also into Rakan during the uh, play-in stage. Similar strategy here, you know, forcing the breakup of Zaya Rakan and then looking at something that is tankier than him and will have crowd control answers for a Rakan possible engage. Because, you know, I really do like this champion uh, designed with very clear strengths for long range engage, very quick engage. But Rakan is a very squishy champion. And we've seen people that, um, you know, aren't as quick or uh, as seasoned on the champion 
just go down very early on in the team fights. And not only is it a lane phase answer with Leona, uh, who can just lock him down with stuns uh, pretty uh, easily as far as the melee range goes, as far as the, the E as well route, but Syndra again yep. into Rakan makes playing team fights so difficult. As we stated in the previous game of KT Rolls vs. Team Liquid, Syndra, even when she's not fed, it's so hard to get around the long range stun, uh, the knockback, force of will. The zone um, control is infuriating to deal with. Plus, then you might just die when she presses R on you when you come in for the beginning and you don't get the chance uh, to get back out of the team fight, apply your second uh, Especially when you're a Rakan or a, a Ezreal, for example. But what I do see on the side of EDG, the Syndra, the Leona, the Zaya, these are early game power picks. And look at that, Lee Sin already taken off the table, <laughs> as is the Darius. I love it when we are in a, an age and a meta where Haro is just drawing Lee Sin bands. He, he drew it in the LPL yep. as well. Uh, that is a lot of respect for what this guy could pull off on the champion. He is a mechanically intensive player uh, and a very aggressive jungler. Let's go back here, though, to the last pick that Mad did lock in. Spawn was right in thinking that they were going to offer this trade of the Ezreal into Kai'Sa. Uh, or, excuse me, they banned out the Kai'Sa very yes. early on. Ezreal and then X. they just pick up the Ezreal, who has been Breeze's most played champion, most comfortable champion for him in the bottom side. Uh, and that is going to set up their duo uh, for a bit of, you know, comfortable laning as far as uh, comfort champions go. All right, going to try to put some distance between this EDG engage and the Mad Team roster. They're going to lock in Zoe. So leaning a little bit towards that poke style. Hmm. A little bit of mobility, not what I was expecting. Well, she really did fall out of favor after the last rounds of nerfs. Um, you know, people remember a lot from summer season. Um, if they haven't paid attention to the last few patches of Zoe just dominating and, you know, yep. bubble and the large amount of poke damage coming through. Um, but yeah, it has, she has not been seen after the last round of Nurse. We'll see if she can actually make use though, because Mad Team are looking pretty squishy right now. Uh, although they do index very highly on long range engaged. You know, there's the bubble, the flashes from Rakan and Gragas can both be explosive and Ezreal being a very mobile damage dealer Coke. can follow up on those. There is no margin for error though, because yeah. Olaf doesn't care about any CC you want to put in front of you. Call of the Forge God is massive long range engaged, as is the, the, the uh, uh, Leona and Syndra stuns that can come down. So EDG have got so many tools to engage from a screen away. Mad Team gonna close their composition out here with what looks like a Cho'Gath. I mean, if you need to get ahead, they've got all the tools in their kit to stay ahead and just keep applying pressure. Definitely true. And Mad Team hovering over the possible Cho'Gath answer for the top lane here, tank to tank. Uh, does have the feast for uh, executing, you know, any sort of frontline members that will come in if they do get the five on five, but there's not really a point and click CC available. So again, bringing up the ease of execution of the team compositions, there, it is a lot easier for Edward Gaming to pull off their combinations. However, Mad's combinations will be that much longer range and that much more uh, explosive and quick for themselves. So there is a possibility here, though, being the second seed from LMS always does bring a decent amount of weight yes. for Mad Team to prove because everybody uh, expects and accepts Flash Wolves on the world stage. Uh, but it has been very difficult for the second and third seeds to make a name for themselves. Especially when you consider Mad Team were challengers last year. You know, they, they promoted to LMS and in one year. They've gone from fourth to second to worlds. And we'll see what sort of splash they can make on the stage with a composition that quite frankly is quite challenging to, to pull off. You know, they, they really cannot afford to get caught out. They cannot afford to fall behind because of all of the initiation tools sitting on the side of Edward Gaming. And of course, Edward Gaming, they've just qualified through play-ins. They were the strongest looking uh, high seed in the play-ins. I'd say team overall in all of the play-ins, strongest looking team universally. I mean, they had, you mentioned the bottom lane a little bit, yeah. uh, iBoy. Uh, he was playing very aggressively on a lot of his Kai'Sa play. Scout was able to rack up a couple of solo kills. Uh, so they definitely are warmed up. Well, we'll find out how much it will help them as EDG take on Mad Team. 
for game two of Worlds 2018. I'm quickly looking down Summoner spells, no real surprises that I can see just yet. And Mako, I love that. Flash Ignite. You always have to be ready for an engage the moment Mako gets level two. Uh, as soon as you got the option to EQ in. So I have it built into me, hardwired. Every time I see a Leona in game, I immediately check if they're uh, running something akin to fervor yep. <laughs> yep. because of misfits uh, and their run last year at world. So does it excite you or disappoint you that it's uh, not there? So today? the thing is, with the changes to the runes, um, Aftershock is definitely the highest value and you always want to go for that. And it's only slightly less damage actually. Okay. Uh, so it still, it breaks some damage, uh, but yeah, it's the defensive it option. It's the, it's the standard option. It's what you should choose. Got it, but it has less flavor. It is it's slightly less exciting. Yeah, I guess nowadays an equivalent might be like Electrocute or uh, Predator or something. <laughs> that to, would be uh, awesome. Forever, dark, but... dark Harvest would make me very happy, but I don't think so. <laughs> nevertheless, nevertheless, EDG, uh, they've gone for their defensive start. We caught a glimpse there of Mako sitting Ooh. behind the red brush. bush. And I think he just got spotted out by K and by Breeze. Now it's K and Breeze that were picked up by the AHQ Challenger team. The top trio were the three core members of the team uh, that have helped Mad team go up. Take a look at that. Level one, Dennis Blade goes in. Some good damage from iBoy. But uh, it is really on 2K, and at the same time, Scout jumps onto Uniboy as well. Yep, in the mid lane, bit of a decent trade here, honestly. Scout already level one here on Syndra. Uh, did find the early Q, is gonna miss that one. Aro, though, as we transition to, into the jungle. Started Wolves, by the way, uh, transitioning over to Blue afterwards into an early scuttle for himself here. Uh, now, all teams, you can see these rivers in the, or these wards in the river. These are your scuttle crab scouting wards. Uh, that everybody wants to place in order to not get double scuttled like yeah. we saw in the last game, uh, which should be fairly rare. And that's why on your minimap, uh, you can see Kong Yu on the Gragas uh, immediately goes for bottom scuttle as they got vision of Olaf. All right, so gonna be a trade there as far as river vision is concerned. Someone as expected because that level one eye boy, the Mako, they're pushing into Breeze and K and EDG. I'm looking across top and bottom. He's shoving towards Mad Team, although this minion wave may have something to say about it. For the time being, it's just trading as usual. Ray getting a very good chunk, but it's just every glimpse we look at is EDG with very small advantages on the entire team. Here comes Kongi for an invade. Oh. I don't know if he was spotted. I couldn't quite see if that ward caught a glimpse. Yeah, the little uh, river entrance ward. Yeah, there we go. Able to Didn't give need. them some information. And Haru is going to be able to trade effectively on Olaf. The only way that works out is if you've been unseen. So yeah. I'm going I'm to think maybe you only kind of have to go for that play if you have a sweeper or if you've been able to really track those early trinket placements. All right, so that's like catches on to Breeze. He manages to buffer up the arcane shift and gets out to safety. But Iboy and Mako, I just, I can't not watch this lane because the players have already shown throughout, you know, the play-in stage on the world stage here that they really want to go in. And when you've got a champion like Leona, she's really only at her best diving into the enemy's faces. Yeah, Leona definitely has a lot of answers for Rakan as yep. well, as we can see early on in the lane phase and getting a lot of use out of that aftershock. So we can return to it. We were kind of joking before about, you know, offensive runes uh, for the champion, but aftershock is just so perfect for her because it's loaded with stats. You get defensive resistances as soon as she goes in, whether she lands a Zenith Blade or an ultimate, uh, or even gets melee range for the Q, and you get a little bit of extra damage exploding afterwards. Uh, meanwhile, Ray does get deep vision. That is one of the number one things I want to look for with top laners when you're pushing up like that, to use your extra time, those extra 10 seconds to go get a deep ward on a jungle camp. So now the Krugs have been warded, and Haro is chasing Kongyu uh, into his own jungle already. Uh, there we go. Olaf is jumping into some situation. I'm waiting to see whether or not Kongyu and Uniboy want to respond. Scout has already got the first move, and they're going to contest the first big chicken. Sleepy Trouble Bubble comes down as well as a long range paddle star. And this is a low HP Haro. Spell Thief helps secure first blood for Mad Team. Kong Yu's not done yet. Look at the paddling. That's going to be flashed away from by Scout. And Uniboy almost found a second. Uniboy collapses. I was worried for him in the 1v1 solo lane going up against Scout. But in fact, it is Jungler that is going to give over the advantage. Red buff now on the Zoe bottom lane is 
Getting a little spicy, though. Oh, very well played by Kate and Breeze. They get out of the engage, manage to re-engage as well. Now, Ray dashes forward onto Liang. The mad team, they are the ones that get the advantage, and it is so important that it's Uniboy that gets that first blood gold. He already picked up the Merc Treads, and Kay is trying to hold on to Maker because I think Iboy just finished his recall. Yes, he did, and he's got himself that BF Sword. All right, EDG opted to put in their young blood Aro in for their first uh, group stage event game, uh, and he goes for an inbay, gets caught with the Sleepy Trouble Bubble. You know that as Zoe, that's going to be enough burst damage. Scout, you could say maybe he had the option of walking up to block that Paddle Star once the bubble had landed uh, and deny some of that burst damage. Uh, it does feel bad, yeah. but maybe that would block enough damage to save his jungler. Regardless, now he's going to have to deal with his Zoe red buff. Here we go, though. Top lane, he's back out on the map and already wants to make up for it. All right, so this is the Haro we somewhat expected. Uh, likes to be proactive, likes to look for options. Ray has access that call of the Forge God and has thrown it down. Liang's uh, rupture is going to get taken away from him. This is just a fairly easy kill from Haro uh, jumping onto Liang. Yeah, if at first you don't succeed, just gank again. Haro uses Predator this time around. He was able to get his purchase off and finds the kill in the top lane for former North American LCS player Ray. <laughs> Definitely showing up. We actually talked about EDG's you know, strong early game uh, during picks and bans, Kobe. And I've got some stats that I want to throw your way. Uh, taking a look at some of their team KDA, sitting at around four. Uh, their goal difference at 15 over the course of the summer split averages 773. And one of the big reasons, one of the big you know, uh, uh, strengths in that early game is Haro and his impact in the early game, which we'll get to in a moment. The Zenith Blade comes down onto K, but there isn't enough damage just yet. And there we go. Kills plus assists, 3.2. Gold difference, fourth for his league. And it's only the kill participation. That's a little lower than the rest of the game. Yeah, notice they use the stat kills plus assists at 15 instead of, you know, KDA or something right there. He also got a death early on, but he was able <laughs> to create some, you know, early action there. Does get the kill. Uh, we'll see if the kill and red buff towards uh, Uniboy in the mid lane does translate. Uh, into further pressure, because as of right now, uh, Scout is moving up with Syndra, and he has two members of his team. Oh, the help. portal jump puts Uniboy exactly where Haro wants him. Oh, oh my God, but he decides not to go for the kill. Haro's caught out. He's bounced back close enough to get a kill onto Uniboy, but Mad Team find two. Uniboy, oh no. It was such a good counter there for Mad until he comes back in the green. You know it has happened so many times when the solo laner Trevor wants that kill credit even though they're on low life, could have walked away and, uh, you know, Kongyu would have been able to finish off that extra kill too. Regardless though, it's still a great counter from Mad and it's still a thousand gold lead over EDG. So let's take a look at this Acer Predator replay and see how it all started out because EDG started out, we think it's lights out for Uniboy. But he gets down to, what, 20 HP there? Kongyu flies in like a superhero on Gragas, gets the kill, level six, Pops his ultimate, but Uniboy still close enough for Olaf to be able to just turn around and throw the last axe. You gotta back off, Trevor. You have to do it. Greeting can cause problems. And Kong Yu, all credit to this guy. He's up 20 CS over Haro. He's been in the right place at the right time to have 100% kill participation. Uh oh. This was the number one all pro jungler for the 2018 LMS Summer Split. Look at EDG, they've got a four-man stack on this blue buff. That's a gigantic signal. It says back the hell off, Kong Yu. And they will secure that one. But Mad Team, they've still got themselves an 800 gold lead. There's a small CS discrepancy in the mid lane, but they're going to be pretty happy with the opening 10 minutes of this lane. Yeah, I think Mad Team are pretty happy, uh, you know, as far as the early success, especially of their jungler. Uh, that right there, though, was a very smart play from the EDG. I like their communication. Their bottom lane of Iboy and Mako has been constantly pushing in. Uh, that of Mad Team, and using that bottom lane pressure to go for the invade, get the blue buff again here for the Syndra in the mid lane. Scout already is racking up the CS lead now uh, against the Zoe, and him being level nine is looking for possibilities uh, to blow him up. Yeah, thankfully the CS uh, discrepancy does not equate to a gold lead. Uniboy's kill plus assist when he got that first blood bonus. He's sitting bang on even just behind uh, this minion wave and goal, roughly. And for Mad Team, 
starting to scale up. We saw that she picked up by K. Breeze making his way towards that first item spike. And, you know, we touched on the Ezreal versus Kaisa. It's not quite the same against iBoy, who's already got the Storm Razors, comes into power a little bit earlier, a little bit quicker. Uh, but what do you make of these two AD carries as we progress now into the two item, three item, you know, mid game stage? So I, is Breeze gonna be okay? So Zaya to me has always been one where uh, I actually feel comfortable in a quote unquote crit marksman with a fairly smooth build path and, and scaling options because Zaya does uh, scale pretty well with, you know, cooldown reduction and, all, and attack speed and, and all of these things that you can get early. So it's not like you're sitting on one of those Caitlyn S champions yeah. where you have to get a lot of crit multipliers. Just with, you know, the invention of the Storm Razor, uh, a single item uh, feels pretty good. And you can see why, you know, iBoy has been able to push in quite a lot with the Leona leading the way. Uh, it's, it's really the combination there with them having the extra tankies coming from the support and the lockdown. Uh, they, they feel just fine scaling, you know, towards the double item power spike. Breeze, though, he has so many games on Ezreal. Yes. This is his comfort champion. This is the situation that he likes to be in. As soon as he can start to transform these mana pieces yes. into real items, then he'll feel a lot better. So this is still kind of the low of the game. Now he gets his Iceborne Gauntlet at least, so there's some armor and some kiting potential. Uh, and he's starting to feel a little bit more confident. All right, first dragon of the game is a mountain. It seems to be a point of contention right now, but not one that either team's willing to commit to. And my eyes are going to be squarely on the team's decision making as we get to this mid game. One of the things that both EDG and Mad Team have shown a tendency towards maybe is some questionable decisions in the mid game, whether ahead or behind. It is one of the points of criticism that we've had uh, around the number two seed from LMS, the number three seed from the LPL. And for EDG, Let's see exactly what they do. They're still down just a couple hundred gold, and they will get an uncontested dragon. Yeah, smart move here from Mad not to contest at all. Look at that vision. It would be face checking into complete darkness just for an early game mountain trade uh, against a Leona that has a Syndra. Like, that is insane pick potential. It feels like we're some fairly similar, you know, team outlines as far as the last game where. EDG with vision control will threaten multiple long range stuns that will lock you in place with plenty of damage to follow it up uh, in the Syndra as well as the Leona. So you have to be very careful when you're working for the vision game and use your information uh, accordingly. And I'm going to keep my eyes on Metin's flashes. The moment they are unavailable, they became them instant targets for Ray and Mako to, to look to shut down. For the time being, uh, no towers secured yet. 13 minutes in, Mad Team trying to react a little bit. It, it feels like EDG have made more uh, movements on the map. You know, we keep seeing multiple members moving towards the mid lane or roaming towards the jungle. And only now have Mad started to shuffle their players around. To the lane. Yeah, it has been uh, EDG with CS leads and pushing leads for most of their lanes for most of the game. Uh, the gold lead, uh, being very slightly in Mad's favor is again a testament to uh, you know good timing from Jungler as well as the support roam there that K was able to make up towards the mid lane. Yep. Um, but ha yeah, exactly, you bring up the point though that EDG have been the ones with the pushing lanes, uh, have been the ones trying to set up that vision a little bit quicker, and we'll see if they're able to you know convert that into some more proactive plays for themselves. Right now, Kongyu back out into the river, trying to fight the good fight of Vision yes. and uh, take away some of those opportunities. And of course, one of the guys definitely leads the way when it comes to decision making on the side of Mad. Um, look at the item spikes, by the way. One item for pretty much everybody. Uniboy, uh, a little bit of thrift shopping. Hasn't yet completed a big ticket item, but will do so very, very shortly. So what does the Mad team want to do to win? When you've got a, a Zoe, Ezreal, you know, it feels like keep them at bay and just poke them down until you can take objectives. And you know, what other options do they have to them? Yeah, I feel, I feel like you've got to make picks. Make use of the Sleepy Trouble Bubble angles, going over walls, uh, going into uh, river opportunities through the jungle. Because as we said, again, you have Gragas and Rakan. This is a combination of very good follow-up if one of those Sleepy Trouble Bubbles like that one just fired would land, or even starting off yourselves. But they just don't have the innate stats yeah. to pull it off. So when you don't have the raw stats to go head to head in a fight, you have to make use of those timing windows and trying to pick people off 
uh, and maybe a little bit of extra information. And you're talking about some of the resistances there. Scout gets tagged by the uh, paddle star. Instantly gets chunked down. And of course, uh, just a quick update. Uh, sorry, Kung Ye. That is the jungle for Mad Team. It's not you, as I was saying. Thank you for the update. Kung Ye and K. Now going to get into a little bit of a battle over the Scuttle Crab. Waiting for the Solar Flare or a Zenith Blade. Some sort of initiation tool from Leona. Decides to hold the trigger. Still sitting on Flash. And it's just a contest for objectives. The tower's still standing everywhere as AD carries has now swapped to top lane. And Ray and Yang are now in the bot lane. We saw them trading just a moment ago. Yeah, you can tell the fight over the vision of the river is paramount because that's where all of these plays that we keep trying to set up are going to come from. Now, you also need to take stock of the durability of the towers. Yet, the one in top side is the most healthy for Mad Team. Mid and bottom are very close to falling. So EDG have slowly been wearing away. In addition to the CS leads that they've gotten in their lanes, they've also gained some power damage. So on top side, it well, well, freezes. Mabel to survive for a few seconds longer, but not much longer as the undertow from Haro comes over the wall. I thought the Arcane Shift had it, but he did not. Arcane Shift and Flash from Breeze cannot keep him alive. The Leona combination does find him and EDG get another kill for themselves. So those towers that we just mentioned might start to fall. It's gonna start toppling like dominoes. And of course, there's a couple of pings there onto the Rift Herald as well. Haru's already in position with Scout coming up for support. So this will be another uh, objective, another tool that EDG can twist as they take lead of the game at 17 minutes. There's no contest here for Mad Team. They were all recalled, they were all back. So a big swing in control for Edu Game. In addition to no contest on top side, there's also nothing that Mad Team can trade on the weak side of the map. Yep. Because EDG were already in control of the Dragon. They took the Mountain Drake first before rotating to the top side of the map. They get to check all of the boxes here. Unanswered kill, unanswered tower, and the Rift Herald collected as well. So a worthy investment of four players up to the top side of the map. Here we go, it's Mako's initiation, even with him getting away from the solar flare from Mako and getting out of the combination. Highboy was able to stay in distance, just running at him, finishes up the damage, and uh, EDT happy to find the last hit. Yeah, final last hit, take control of the game. They were down in gold, now they're up. Swung that one around with the Rift Herald as well. Uh, that will be another tool that allow them to just extend this lead further. Uh, you mentioned the tower HP, Kobe, mid and bottom is very, very low. Plus there's a Mountain Drake to contest for, so EDG have got a plethora of objectives to play around. And it really just feels like they can pick and choose which lane they want to focus on before they go for Dragon. Exactly, and with this setup having a teleport ready on Orn, the options are everywhere for themselves. It's another Mountain Drake, so you know they would probably rather have uh, you know a more explosive Drake, but Mountain number two would mean that they could honestly 20 minute a Baron here. Yep. So Rift Herald is using mid lane to try and take this tower down and open up the map for themselves a little bit more, try and get some deeper wards into Mad Team's jungle to allow them to threaten the Syndra uh, as well as Orn long range start to a fight. Well, that chunk was pretty sizable in the mid in a turret, and now EDG have got positioning. Uh -huh. Solar Flare is available as well. I'm looking for a target. That's a stun onto K. He uses the cleanse, pops over the wall, waiting, waiting. He had to go in, did not decide to do so. Instead, EDG again, back away. Look, there's 100 million pings on this Mountain Drake. Very clear the objective they want to fight right now. All right, Kanye is actually moving into position here as the rest of Mad Team are coming through the jungle and Breeze getting some poke damage with the Ezreal. Of course, the longer EDG are in the pit, the happier Mad Team are going to be. Ezreal and Zoe, they want to get the poke down. Call of the Forge God comes out, but Breeze is able to arcane shift over Ooh. the wall. That's the engage with the quickness of the knockup. K jumps back out. Liang is left in the middle of the team is mad simply cannot get close enough the paddle star goes in between EDG but there's no goal scored body slam interrupted Liang manages to pick one up onto Mako bad team continue to chase forward here comes Uniboy he's flash forward used that spell thief as well and they're gonna back away mad team with a fight and get the dragon huge team fight for mad team because they're able to put a stop to Mountain Drake number two with Baron right about to enter the map here they get some gold back for themselves Plus, they get the Elemental Drake buff, and they get a little bit of breathing room to push out their lane. How good was Kay's engage? Because it felt fantastic to me. Caught three or four people with the quickness, 
as well as the knockup in just a moment. Oh, let's take another look here, Trevor, because the timing comes through with the teleport. It's a good initial disengage here. You see Flash and Arcane shift get uh, Dragas and Ezreal both away from the initial movements. And then, as you said, K goes in with the Rakan to set them up. They've held Dragas Ultimate this whole time, though. And it's all about the bubble landing, forcing the re-engage here, allowing the setup for Gragas combination to find the kill. After that, they try and take a little bit with the flash, but it's enough to earn them the objective and put a stop to EDG racking up all of these consecutive victories. 21 minutes into the game and Mad Team are down a thousand gold. It does not feel like EDG have a significant sort of lead, but you can feel the moment some of these initiation tools are used, every single thing is thrown into the team fight and whichever team connects more spells, Feels like is who's gonna win out in the trade. Vision contested, and as you mentioned, uh, one mountain apiece. Baron will definitely be a point of contest for the coming minutes. Yeah, after they get back onto the map though, again, instantly EDG pushing up both side waves, and they might be able to get the last outer turret for themselves as well. Ray on the bottom side with the orange, push it all the way into the turret, while the rest of EDG are threatening around Baron in the consistent vision game. And of course, talking about Ray pushing that wave, you can see he's up 20 CS over Liang in the mid lane. It's a 40 CS advantage to Scout in the AD carry position. It's a 30 CS advantage to iBoy. So these small little advantages, it's difficult to ignore them because they can build and, and develop momentum as the game continues. I mean, iBoy's got himself the rapid fight cannon. He's on the Zaya. We know he likes to play forward and in his opponent's faces. So it's going to be very scary and a, a trouble for Mad Team to deal with when he's got so much mobility. That being said, we need to give credit where credit is due. We set it up in Champ Select as there is very little margin for error for Mad Team with the low health bars on this squad and high amount of mobility that you have to make use of that mobility. They actually pulled off a very good disengage for the initial round of crowd control that EDG threw out in that fight. And that's what allowed them uh, to then get the follow-up chase kill there with the bubble landing. So good execution in fight number one. They're gonna have to consistently pull off that similar level of execution uh, as the Baron now makes the rewards for the next team fight much, much heavier. And definitely gonna put a lot of the disengage, the, the, the communication, the decision-making on Konya. You know, 100% kill participation still and right now, he's dancing around this Baron Vision. With EDG, they've snuck their ways up. Sleepy Trouble Bubble has found iBoy, but there's no further follow-up. True Shot Barrage does tag him. Top laners, by the way, on the bottom lane. Liang has no teleport available. So advantage to EDG if they can initiate a fight. An interesting little difference there in the bottom. Uh, they do have a, a Warmox already finished for Ray, And I believe he has hit the health threshold. So him pushing in uh, the 1v1. Oh, I guess we get a stun here. Not going to be any sort of follow-up, though, as the plant is now popped. Anytime one of those stuns does land, yep. though, uh, take a little bit as a pause because there is a lot of pop. Uh, regardless, though, the health regeneration is going to allow them a little bit of extra push in the sideways. You can see Ray is yeah. back right off, full health here, whereas laying on the Cho'Gath, he builds for the Righteous Glory, for the team initiation for that engage. Give them a little bit more stability to the team fight because you can pop right to Slory on Cho'Gath uh, to get in there and force the fight, get you the gap closer that you really need that Cho'Gath is kind of missing from his kit where you can more easily land those abilities like Rupture that are very critical. Well, it's 25 minutes coming close to it. And Mad Team, they've been able to fend off some of the initiations that EDG have put together. And I like Zoe Ezreal options as we get later into the game on the condition they have their flashes up and they can avoid this all-in power and that the CC that comes from Orn, from Syndra, from Leona. You can see Haro and Scout. I don't want to use the word tunneling, but it feels like it's a bit of tunnel vision here on Baron. There's a bottom outer turret that's not con committed for really. Maybe G are now pushing into this right-hand quadrant. They continue to step forward. Sleepy Trouble Bubble. Well, fine, Reiko. There's no further follow-up. Decent enough damage. But again, nothing enough for Mad Team to actually feel confident on an engage. I take that back! K decides to jump back in. That's a defensive flash. Here comes Liang. Remember, he had no teleport, so he's run all the way up. 
The rupture will force Ray to flash, but now Scout has joined the fight. And that was only with four members. They didn't even have Zoe there. The re-engage is up. Oh yeah, but all the damage is on Liang. This is good for Mad Team. There's the body slam. Featherstorm comes up. They managed to find themselves a kill onto Ray. Five versus four, and Mad Team are looking for more. Scout, Haro, and Maiko, they're going to hang out inside their jungle. Do Mad start the Baron or not? And the question right now is no. Great use of the Gragas ultimate once again from uh, Mad Team here. And now with the extra kill, they're able to push in on the mid turret, finally fight back some territory for themselves. Breeze moving up on the edge, and they're looking for the bubble. Keep your eyes for a Gragas engage. The flanking power is there. That's a defensive flash from Scout. Instant reaction time. Lands on a solar flare and Konya buys some time with that stopwatch, but he will go down. The tower is not yet secured. It's one hit away, and EDG, they get a kill, and they hold on to their turret. Oh, he finally makes a misstep here as Mad Team reached too far under the turret, and they get cut down. Scout's reaction time? is insane. Gaga showed for a millisecond, but here comes Uniboy. He blows up Scout with the long range paddle star. And this is now two teleports coming down. Ray has jumped into the fray. Breeze has got flash available once more. Gets tagged by the first part of the Forge God, but not the second. Uniboy looks forward. There goes the sleepy trouble bubble. Two shot barrage won't find any targets and mad team maintain control for now. Yeah, great reaction, but can't react to that one. Uniboy is able to get in, gets another kill for themselves. And we're back to a stalemate here. Both teams trying to reset to push out their opposite waves. Ray heads to the bottom side, while Uniboy is trying to clear up top. And let's take another uh, gander at this team fight. Uh, Gragas tried to get in. Insane, as you were saying, Scout is able to reactively flash away from the Gragas coming over the wall. You gotta think that they had an inkling that he was there and coming in for it with the way that Mad Team were posturing around the turret and threatening that dive. But still, really nice movement there. They get the turnaround. Uh, Mako on the Leona answers instantly, finds him over the wall and turns around the kill for EDG. The eight health that kept that turret alive were finally taken away yeah. in the end here. And Mad Team does get that gold, uh, bringing the game very, very close here. Uh, but man, we definitely had an exciting couple of games to start this group stage off. Well, at 25 minutes, you can see the stats on your screen. With the lead, EDG were 22 and 4. And with the deficit, Mad Team are 3 wins and 14 losses. I think this game is fairly even, um, albeit it wasn't at 25 minutes. Mad Team are showing they can land the right tools. I was nervous about the composition that they had, about uh, potentially being engaged over and over again by EDG and not being able to dodge the skill shots, but they've shown they can. They've shown they can negate the threat. They've had good vision, and now Mad Team are set up in this mid game to try and contest either for Baron, which is looking like they were going towards now. All right, the thing that Mad Team have to watch out for now that they've been able to fight their way back into this is an Orn ultimate through a jungle corridor because that can burn a lot of cooldowns, flashes and champion dashes just itself. And that has a lot of follow up of a Leona stun from an ultimate, you know, the long range Syndra coming through. So those are sort of the three main large AOE crowd control abilities that EDG are trying to focus here. Mad Team so far has done a good job just like that of disengaging and avoiding those hits while landing their own skill shots uh, within the small confines of the river here where we just saw the last team fight. Haro now moves in and there it is right There's through the jungle. a narrow corridor, but the target is only Liang. He's got no flash available, but he's chained CC, locked down and shut down. It's Scout that picks up the kill. Breeze is trying to poke from the side and so is Uniboy. Mako gets obliterated. Here comes Konya, gets the barrel down. So far it's a one for one. going in. Looks for the knockout, but he will only find Ray. K goes down, taken out by Eyeboy, but the damage is drastic and a sleepy trouble bubble sets Scout up to get dunked down. Here comes Breeze, hopping forward to the Arcane ship, the Arcane ship, finds Ray. Oh, no. down. Mad team, this is mad. They are tower diving and in a turret, and Uniboy will just get out of range. Mad Team at 30 minutes, they chase EDG into their own base. Mad Team going deep in the paint, and they chase EDG all the way back. Oh, he's not done yet. Boom! Mad does the flash. Uniboy, <laughs> what was that? That is Uniboy. Oh my God! React. 
Russians galore, Trevor. He sees that thing coming a mile away. Skill shots from two different angles. I think actually in that case, too many. Okay, let's take a look at the beginning though. <laughs> we'll get to that one when we get there. As we said, Orn Ultimate can fill up the entire jungle pathway here, and there's no way a wide champion like Cho'Gath is gonna be able to avoid it. Doesn't matter though, because on the outskirts, they get the focus fire down on Mako, take down the support. Then you know Kay is coming in, but it doesn't matter. Okay, stick it a little bit. Now, he didn't have vision of Zoe, so I'm thinking the Ezreal ult actually ruined it because he saw the Ezreal ult. I don't think oh. he would have reacted to just the Zoe. As we get, yeah, that's what it looked like. It was that's a bunch exactly of fog of war. It looked like. How do you react? Uh, you honestly, though, I think that might have been a case of too many skill shots and the right Ezreal ult was what he reacted to. But look at that, he also got the kill. It's so as soon as Zoe popped up. So all credit to iBoy there. And I'm so glad that we set up Breeze's Ezreal before this game began. 8,380 team fight damage. Three item spike was hit before it. And despite the fact that Liang went down first when he was caught out by that Orn ultimate, uh, Mad Team got enough poke on key crucial targets to continue the chase. The one thing that I am noticing, Mad Team on the re-engage is how they win fights. Their team comp is not particularly great. Maybe it's starting a fight. They don't want to then get easily caught by all that CC. And Cho'Gath is the perfect one to get caught if someone's going to get locked down. Yep. Uh, he was able to soak up a decent amount of cooldowns there. And it's all about the offensive players trying to make use of the few seconds that someone is going down on your team. You don't run for the hills when one of your team members is getting focused. You look for counter damage. They're landing the bubbles. They're landing the Ezreal skill shot. Yep. And that is what is finding them their kills. Credit to Spawn for pulling off the Ezreal intro on the Analyst test before this one happened, because Freeze is definitely delivering. Even though he is down in CS, he does not have the crit multipliers. He's just making it work with Mystic Shots. He's getting enough time to get enough Mystic Shots off in these team fights. And, you know, it's 33 minutes in. EDG, of course, the number 3C coming out, out of the LPL. And Mad Team is something to prove. A former Challenger squad, and now they're going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. They're Looking set to take an advantage, but this game is still too close to call as both teams are posturing once again around Baron. Yeah. It really is difficult to put a gold value on mobility uh, as far as getting out your damage. Because if you just stand there and auto attack each other, of course, the crit marksman is going to be able to put out way more. But long range has been the name of the game for Mad Team. Zoe and Ezreal finding bubbles, finding yeah. poke damage, uh, and then also having the opportunity of these all-in players uh, with Dragas and Rakan pulling the trigger at the right time has been the key to them keeping it so close. And we keep saying this with EDG actually being the ones with the gold lead here. Yes. So it's a very slight gold lead, um, but EDG still, they feel just fine about pulling off the team fights because uh, they do have what I would say is more reliable and easier to pull off as far as the, the AOE comes through and the crowd control that they would want to set up. Um, Especially again, when you start looking at the objectives, you have to play around at this stage in the game. Mm -hmm. You know, Dragon will be coming up. It's the last elemental B for Elder. Uh, Baron has been a point of contact for a while. EDG have not turned themselves into fish in a barrel by starting it and then, you know, getting poked down by uh, Uniboy Zoe, who's got a Death Cap, Ludens, as well as Void Staff. Mad Team continue to defend, continue to hold off against EDG, but this is the first time to have a really serious commit here onto the Baron. It is being melted down. Sleepy Trouble Bubble will catch onto Ray. Mad are coming in from the flanks. Breeze on the bottom. Uniboy now spinning around. Baron has been peeled away, and EDG running for their lives. Mad Team have thwarted the Baron attempt for now. And Mad Team have the inside track on the mid lane here. They're trying to push up the minion waves. EDG, though, very happy to get that Scuttle Crab on their way out. Ray's not done getting through the jungle here. He's got his flash available oh, to three. him. Oh, but the knock up onto Ray means Call of the Forge God cannot be sent back into Mad Team. Breeze, I thought, was so close to going down just as his flash became available. Yeah, that was a risky move. And even though he got out, those are two critical cooldowns that Breeze had to use to live. His QSS and his flash blown because of that pincer movement from EDG and Scout. Okay, so 35 minutes in. Kobe, which team composition do you prefer when we get later? We don't have time to answer that question now because Mad Team 
They're starting with Baron. K is sitting on the flanks. Flash is available. Quickness is available. And he's trying to get out of range. A, a crucial target needs to get caught up. Where is K's engaged? Oh, he's right around the corner. Call of the Forge Guard is on cooldown. So Ray cannot disrupt this. 4,000 hit points in the Baron. Scatter the Weak has been used. K just got spotted out. So Mad Team, they've found the engage. They get a knock up onto Hardboy, but all the damage is being focused on Ray. Solar Flare comes down, and it's a kill onto Konya. There's a tower killed somewhere else in the map, and now EDG are running for their lives. Paddlestar finds nobody, and Mad Team in a four versus five are pushing EDG back. Oh, That's the flash board for Freeze. Call of the Forge God comes out. It catches onto Liang. He's killed, but there's simply not enough focus. Iboy finally goes down. Uniboy found him in the chaos. He's not done yet. His Breeze is now jumping forward. I'm so impressed that Uniboy found the kill onto <laughs> iBoy, threading the needle in that team fight. iBoy, you boy, they're all getting all the kills here, flashing in aggressively to try and move the meter on this game. But again, we draw pretty much a stalemate. Let's take a look at how it started out. Flash for Ling is boosted pretty early on. Ray has to get over the rupture. And look at the engage from K. He does get them, but the turn is better from EDG. Leona, more tanky, able to lock down the single Gragas and burn him before any sort of reaction is able uh, to be made. But then it's iBoy without even the tanks turning around. Usually when you see that, you'll see them all turn at the same time. But iBoy just goes for it. Tries to get the crits here on Debris, finds single kill. But now we're back at it, Trevor. This is round three. Well, let's find out if it's going to be a knockout or not. Mad Team are inside the Baron Pit. Look at the minimap. iBoy is a mile and a half away. All right, this Baron's going down. 5,000 hit points. EDG, they found their way into the pit. The quickness is available for K, but he needs to find some targets. Call of the Fort God comes out as Breeze finds a way to flank, trying to force away Scout, and that's some pressure onto K. They found themselves a kill onto Ray, but it's at the cost of Breeze's life. It's at the cost of K's life. All the damage is now on iBoy and Uniboy to try and finish this one out. But the Baron is stopped, the Baron is thwarted. It's a two for one in favor of EDG. A single member advantage here from EDG means they have the run of the map. They can push up the mid lane, they can collect the Cloud Drake, or they can return to the Baron, Trevor. And that was such a good split from EDG in that team fight. They had three members chase up to the top side to get the extra kill, while it was just iBoy fending for himself with the Zaya in the river, holding up three members, buying time for this setup. Do you believe it can be stolen? There's no feast available. Tonya has got himself a flash as well as that body slam. CP Trouble Bubble allows a secure of the rupture. Crucially, Baron has been reset. Mad Team have done enough for now. iBoy looking for a fat man. Gets a couple of autos <laughs> down as the Solar Flare slows down Uniboy. He's got no flash available. Goes golden, but here comes K. Quickness is on cooldown. Uniboy gets burst down and blown up by iBoy. The call of the Forge God comes out. That's a double already as EDG are looking for the advantage. A shutdown onto Liang. K and Breeze are running for their lives. It's a four for one. Three for one, correction. And the minions are helping out K and they're helping out Breeze. The Baron has been stopped if there's any solace to be found. And EDG, they once again turn. They once again go back. Round three, won by EDG. EDG minions are also doing work. Look at the giant minion waves of both sides that have built up. Those are almost four minion waves worth of cannons stacked up trying to take down the inhibitor turrets themselves. That will allow EDG to finally get some alone time with the Baron. Kobe, this feels like the final difficulty of Odyssey, where you spend forever <laughs> fighting in just one area of the map. EDG will get an uncontested Baron after what feels like an eternity of challenging for it. And you can hear the fans in Busan as EDG get their first significant advantage in 40 minutes of game time. What a well-fought Baron dance, my friend. That one was exhausting. <laughs> and now it will be a completely different game. Let's take another look at the lightest chapter, though, because this was a spicy one. This was EDG returning to the scene of the crime. They go all in on Uniboy. And look at Ray, when he teleports in, with this Orn, lands the ultimate easily through all surviving members.
then on the outside, the only one left with any sort of damage is Freeze. They took down the Zoe at the beginning and took out the possibility of that big burst damage that was keeping Mad Team getting a lot of these counter kills throughout the team fights. But now it is EDG stacked up with Baron Buff looking to get inside Mad Team's base. And it's so difficult for Mad Team. Ezreal and the Zoe and a Cho'Gath as your primary forms of wave clear. They're doing a decent enough job here in the mid lane, but look down bottom. EDG have managed to push fairly sizable minion wave down there. Breeze playing very far forward. He's got flash available to him. He's trying to get some semblance of control back in this game. Now remember, all of Mad Team's fights that have looked very good for them is when they have dodged the initial engage and then re-engaged with the power of that Shogat, with the power of the Gragas. There's no room for error, but there is possibility for them to win some team fights in this game. Mako manages to find a Xenoth Blade onto Liang, who's got about 10 bajillion hit points. Yeah, the Stone Plate used is a really big cooldown, actually. Stone Plate adds quite a few seconds to the survivability of one of the frontliners. At this stage in the game, a lot of the DPS can actually cut through him without it. All right, take a look at K. He goes for the flash quickness, won't find a key target just yet. But Mako will right. find one either. Following Eyeboy, he's alive for now, but gone very, very low. He catches out Uniboy. Mako gets another. The inhibitor goes down to Scout, and EDG with one Baron buff are looking to finish this game. There's a stun there onto Breeze as the Nexus turrets are starting to fall. Edward Gaming took 40 minutes to get onto the Nexus, but they're gonna pick themselves up the first win of World. Turn their attention for a couple extra kills. Take down <laughs> Breeze and Konya, and Edward Gaming take down Matty. That was one hell of a game, Kobe. The crowd still going wild over what must have been 20 minutes of Baron fights, Baron skirmishes, vision wars, the river odyssey that we had. <laughs> it has been a long time since I have witnessed such a beautiful and extensive Baron dance. <laughs> but that was about... Beauty is in the eye of the beholder. It is indeed, and I found it gorgeous. Um, but it raises some questions. You know, we talked to me into this game how both of these teams, EDG and Mad Team, have uh, some question marks around some mid-game decision-making. I, I wondered if EDG could have done some other options uh, in that mid-game, but they eventually got Baron, they eventually won their team fights, and it was, once again, iBoy being in their face, being forward flashing, uh, who was extremely pivotal in those moments. Yeah, that was, that was definitely a risky one. Does pay out in the end. A lot of credit, I think, to Mad Team, to uh, Jungler specifically. Yeah. Uniboy also, because you know, going over his stats and preparing some of the games and watching some of, uh, you know, the later stages from him in the LMS, we were definitely a bit worried for him as yeah. far as heads up versus scout. But that Zoe play is what gave them a lot of the surprise factor, allowing them to chase down yeah. and the re-engages that were so big and a lot of the burst damage that allowed them to get their counter kills. So his Zoe played it six times in summer. He went five and one in the LMS. And this game, definitely one of the more impressive ones. It's a pick that has fallen out of favor. Mm -hmm. and we'll see what he can do later on the group stage. For now though, let's send it to the analyst desk to break that down. Thank you very much. Gentlemen, game two is in the books and it goes in favor of EDG. But this one, very back and forth, close. Both teams with their opportunities to perhaps steal the game. The first place I want to go, though, is the ADC conversation because that's what we had prefaced the entire game with. The idea that Mad Team loves this Ezreal, in particular against the Kai'Sa. Kai'Sa banned out, still pick it into the Zaya. Yeah, and the other ban was the Tom Kench, so they still played it with the Rakan, which is a much different feel. I think that they thought that they would be able to have some priority once they got to that spike. Unfortunately for Kay, he spent so much time out of lane trying to control with Konya that he wasn't actually able to pull any of that together. But the Ezreal pick in itself actually did have a team fight during that mid game where we saw that mobility, where we saw the ability to, you know, force the Zaya away at the start and control the areas that made it justify the pick. It just went too late in the end for really anything to go its favor. And I really want to talk about these team fights and it's hard because sometimes it can be quite like an abstract concept to really uh, understand. But Edward Gaming have this huge problem in team fights where they just only go in. And you can see a little bit in some of these skirmishes where they're flying past towers and 
and they're overextending, overreaching, getting caught in the cookie jar. But in a team comp with an Ezreal, with a Zoe, with these champions that have the ability to disengage, to re-engage, to kite, to poke, these compositions work really well against EDV because they have one speed and they have one gear, and it's to immediately go forward. So any times really long and uh, drawn out team fights happen, this team really struggles to stay consistent over the course of the team fight. Yeah, I also think that's a symptom of the Leona pick. It's not like the champion is able to go in and then out because it doesn't have an out button, but this was the biggest example of that where Mad Team was able to chase really far into it. I thought this was a great game. Uh, it displayed oh, yeah. what Mad Team wanted to do. I think it displayed a lot of the strengths and weaknesses of EDG. and. Definitely more enjoyable to watch than the KT versus TL because of how close it was. Yeah, and I, I got the region for you. <laughs> and the other thing I was going to say, it also highlighted the best and the worst like of the player tendencies in this game as well. Uniboy struggled throughout uh, the gauntlet run in the LMS. You know, Fofo gave him difficulties in lane, then Maple like smashed him honestly in lane. But we saw that the riskiness, the ability to generate plays is still there. And I think that we also showed how pivotal K is this team and kind of, you know, at the same time, what a liability Leung can be in the top lane at the same time. So I think we got to see the best and worst of Mad Team, worst of Mad Team, and I think even EDG showed up in that regard at times as well. Right? Yeah. I mean, EDG, they also have big uh, map control problems. Yep. It wasn't on Showcase or exploited too much this game simply because it was so many team fights back to back. But think about how long you're spinning around a Baron team fight. You know, when you look at perfect League of Legends or very clean League of Legends, it should have been around the vision control, orchestrating a fight that you know you're going to win. Instead, it kind of turned into a bit of an ARAM and it right. didn't showcase that EDG really do struggle around that Baron pit. It's part of the reason why they brought Clear Love back into the roster. So having Haro now into that jungle position plays a little bit too bold, a little bit too aggressive. And suddenly EDG kind of go back into this, I'm not going to call it fiesta, because they were incredibly exciting, very beautiful fights to watch, especially from iBoy's perspective, but just a very different tempo than what EDG are used to playing in the LPL. That's where I want to go next, the idea of the jungle matchup. Kongyo, we had teased him as being kind of the playmaker and, you know, major focus of this team, yes, behind the bot lane. But up against Haro here, uh, Kongyo won out early on in the game, uh, to, to say the least. But clear love on the bench. There will be some questions around EDG moving forward. And who do they use? Yeah, Haro definitely made an over-aggressive play at the start, and you could call it a throw, but you have to, as Spawn said earlier, have to catch it. And that's what Kongya did very well to turn the mid lane priority that Cinder had created and the jungle speed advantage that Olaf should have and use it to his advantage by getting kills when they move in. But this is where someone like Eyeboy is just so fun to watch because all of a sudden, 1v1, you know, the Gragas gets a little bit of advantage, takes top lane wave, so he's experienced as well. Eyeboy just walks into the river and says, you're no longer allowed to go past this point. A lot of the rhythm they get in the game for Mad is being able to get some deeper vision, and they got none of that due to, you know, they're just the 2v1 that was happening in that situation. And Eyeboy will receive our MasterCard player of the game for his performance this time around. Again, in talking about those ADCs, there was kind of the point that, you know, that gold value point where all the Zaya, all of a sudden the Zaya turns on, and boy, did we see that happen. And the biggest strength and weakness of iBoy is that he is not afraid. He doesn't care who you are, he doesn't care what champion you are, he's going to make the aggressive play, he's going to play to oh, kill you. this was gross. And yeah. his mechanics are disgustingly good, and they have been all season long. Whether or not he flashed because he saw the Zoe portal or the Ezreal ult, doesn't matter. That's the most impressive play we've seen today. Yeah, either way, it is slick, and either way, EDG came out with the victory here in game two of the day. Final thoughts on the uh, Fung Fu Buffalo squad, though, and the fight that they put up, because I, I, I'll admit it, I I was sitting here at the top of the day saying I, I didn't think that Mad Team would necessarily take a win in this group. But based on that performance, by all means, they're capable of it. Yeah, absolutely. I think what they will take away from that is that we need to get some more pressure in the early game, and that will give us a more of an ability to generate a lead as opposed to sticking in it. And then I think that their team fighting needs to be cleaned up in the late game because if you're going to go that deep into a game versus a team like EDG, you do have to stand a little bit taller, especially around their uh, tank line. And it's going to be a really fierce fight for second place in this group yeah. because both these teams were super close and we haven't seen how TL matches up against them. Table has been set, ladies and gentlemen. Coming up next, we got Fong Vu Buffalo uh, from the uh, VCS, rather, making their world's debut against the Flash Wolves. See that matchup after the break. Puts Uniboy exactly where Haro wants him. Oh, oh Bowen, but he decides not to go for the kill. Haro's caught out. The paddle star goes in between.
between EDG, but there's no goal scored. Body slam, interrupted. Liang manages to pick one up on Tobacco. Scout's reaction time is insane. Dragger showed for a millisecond, but here comes Uniboy. Fires Ray. Oh, oh, no. down. Mad team, this is mad. They are tower diving. Oh, he's not done yet. Oh, oh the flash. Oh, oh boy. <laughs> what? Trying to force away Scout, and that's some pressure onto K. They found themselves a kill onto Ray, but it's at the cost of Breeze's life. Quickness won't find a key target just yet, but maybe he won't find one either. Following Ivory, he's alive for now, but gone very, very low. He catches out Uniboy, and Edward Gaming take down Matty. Welcome back to Assist of the Week. During the TSM and Cloud9 qualifier match, Cloud9 was looking to solidify their lead against TSM. Near Baron, Zazel and Blabber launched themselves into TSM, causing them to retreat. This scare tactic allowed Cloud9 to use their ultimates efficiently and take down four members of TSM. In the fear, here comes the dive. They'll pick up Mithy, and now Hanser might have been up more than he can chew. Doesn't find the pullback. It's a 5v3. He's still diving with the ultimate. Oh! oh this 